Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramp, here to usher you in into the weekend of December 10th, 11th, and 12th, uh, perhaps maybe even the 13th for some of you out there. But we're going to talk about some of the things that are happening in and around the city of Missoula and beyond. Kicking things off, a little bit of uh, some Hollywood hot gossip happening here in Montana. So that 1883 Yellowstone show uh, is, w you know, it's a, it's a Yellowstone prequel show. So if you know Yellowstone, it's like made in Montana, actually made in Montana, not like the show Big Sky, which is made in Canada. Regardless, they will be covering uh, the story of a fictional family that will uh, become a mainstay in the Yellow Yellowstone TV universe. The 1883 st uh, starts in Texas and shows the migration to Montana. One of our board members here is, uh, works at, uh, with a, a professional rigging company for renting Hollywood grade uh, production equipment. Anyways, this source has said that uh, he, uh, this show will begin filming more and more as, uh, in Montana as production continues. Sam Elliott is the lead of this uh, 1883 uh, and stars on the Power Paramount Plus streaming ser ser show that starts airing December 19th on the S Paramount plus streaming platform. That's good news for Montana area as the production uh, studio in Bonner currently works on the Yellowstone star works on Yellowstone starring Kevin Costner. Of course, I do feel dirty about Holly Hollywood gossip, but let's talk about e something even dirtier. Dirtier, the Omicron is basically sh uh, being shoved to the side in terms of reporting this week. I haven't noticed uh, anything. I mean, most people are just kind of sick and tired of hearing about the news and the news media has been like, hey, you know what? I, uh, that's not good for ratings, so we're not going to talk about that, so we're going to move on. So they've been talking about uh, other things, and so, uh, but then now they're mostly talking about economics and people trying to find their forever homes. Uh, time to sell. Uh, this is one of the big things that I'm going to be talking about as well, is that used cars, uh, they're not m able to really manufacture a bunch of new cars because of the uh, semiconductors. There's a whole background with that. Semiconductors are the reason why our computers and phones and everything works. And there's a big shortage, and the only place that makes them here is here in America. Um, so if you've been uh, leasing a car, now is the time to pull the trigger to buy. But of course, you know the best time to have been leasing is before the pandemic, and you're going to still have the same rates that you had before the pandemic started. So the New York Times did an article about this a month ago, but I wanted to refer to it to make my point. Uh, the average transaction price for a new car topped at $40,000 for the first time in 2021. The average price for used car sales reached almost $25,000. I mean, I'd be lucky just to get $8,000 for a used car. Um, but t uh, so to arrive at this buyout place, the car will depreciate over term of its lease, making it cheaper. But because the car prices have risen so quickly, most buyout values set before 2020 are probably lower than the current market prices. This would not apply to those who leased a car. This would only apply to people who leased those cars before 2020. Anyways, I heard this from a patron here at the library that they had a used car that they sold for uh, more than they bought it for when it was new. So uh, if you have a used car and if you have an extra surplus and you're looking for a little extra change, this is the perfect time to actually get money from your used car. And uh, speaking of cars, uh, Michigan will be giving out a $400 per car just for owning them. So part of this is that the Michigan state law has put in a, a deal and uh, they had famously high insurance rates, uh, which seemed to be working, which uh, seemed to be uh, not working. Every driver in the state will be refunded $400 each for each vehicle they're owned. Um, Mission Governor Gretchen Whitmer says the money comes from a projected $5 billion surplus held by the Michigan Catas Catastrophic Claims Association, a nonprofit that reimburses auto insurance for personal injury medical costs. The state's Republicans and uh, Democrats worked together to pass a no-fault insurance reform bill into law. The, charge lets, uh, the change lets drivers choose how much personal injury protection medical coverage that they want to purchase when they take out or renew an insurance policy. It's also set limits on payments to providers caring for accident victims. So a lot of good news up there, but of course right now, politically speaking, the U.S. will not be part of the Winter Olympics in Beijing's, uh, Beijing due to China responded, you weren't invited. Uh, so far, many of the controversies from China, uh, and there are quite a few, has resulted in this, while in if athletes and their supporters wish to go, they can. So part of this is that the U.S. government does not uh, approve of some of the uh, allegations that Chinese have been known for, uh, the Uyghurs, uh, the, uh, the Muslim group, and there's a lot of speculation, there's a lot of uh, things going on with that uh, in terms of just uh, euthanizing uh, 
wor uh, camps and all that stuff. Uh, there's just a lot of serious stuff going on there, but often adhere, uh, so uh, so far, any relationship with uh, China is highly complex, and a lot of businesses that work into them, like Hollywood, sports, big business, looking to get those $100 million surpluses by uh, sta uh, starting shop in China, uh, will most likely have, have to down denounce the actions of the U.S. government, but if not publicly, to appease the Chinese investors. So, we're in a really kind of weird place with China and many U.S. companies using their connections to get that payday. Um, but it's hard to divest from uh, such a, a lucrative agreement. I mean, of course, I'm not going to go into it too much. I already went into it as much as I can. It's a very big, thick uh, mix of history, human rights violation, and, and a Hippocratic, Hippocratic, uh, Hippocratic practices on both sides. The U.S. ain't perfect, but we're not disappearing people. Just people, uh, they say something we don't like. Uh, just censoring them. Or, okay, moving on. Uh, Ukraine is, is also in the news uh, as U.S. and Russia are in their usual staring contest. U.S. warns Russia not to take mili military action against Ukraine with sanctions and closing uh, international banks. We have some sway in. Um, Russia mentions that NATO should leave or they will have to take action. So the, the thing is, is that Russia uh, decided to uh, start a, a raising up troops and having more and more presence in the border between Russia and Ukraine. Uh, 2014, a little bit of history behind that is that they invaded Crimea, Crimea, Crimea and then they annexed them completely uh, in 2014, uh, like I said. And then of uh, later on, uh, Ukraine started uh, having more NATO forces, but it was the uh, Russians who, uh, who basically started uh, uh, having more and more people there. Uh, in the border between Russia and the Ukraine. So as a result, uh, NATO asked, was like, hey, uh, Ukraine, do you want to help? And Ukraine in the past has been very reluctant to do so. But recently they've been like, yeah, I think it's probably a good idea to be on your guys' side. And so, of course, you know, this is, n this is what I'm kind of hearing right now. It's very much a big staring contest between the U.S. and uh, the Russia. And uh, just to kind of really think about it, like, I, I mean, like, I thought Soviet Union fell back in 1989, proving that socialism doesn't work. Russia is not, I don't, I don't know, it's just, it's weird because, but uh, last I heard, the only people who actually still care about Russia were the old, uh, the ones who grew up during the Red Scare, uh, which happens to be the old white guys in power. Uh, anyways, the tensions in Ukraine are always high when it comes to, or will they, or won't they? Up next, we have a fun video from Gary Gillette and Tuba Santas, and we have them talking about the Tuba Christmas, which is happening tomorrow at 12 noon at the Bonner Band Show. So without further ado, I'm going to let him t uh, speak for it. So here is Gary Gillette. taller today, but I'm, I'm standing here with Gary Gillette, <laughs> who's going to be uh, performing. <laughs> He'll be performing this Saturday at noon at the Bonner Band Shell with uh, Tuba Santa's Tuba Christmas. Tuba Christmas time. Yep. yep, yep. We've reinstituted the event. We did it last year uh, successfully, nice. but we had, uh, uh, you know, for, we, we done it uh, mostly at the mall for like 25, 25 years, I think that was, uh, was our anniversary. Yep. For, Pearls. Was that 30 years? I think it was 30 years. We did it there yeah, a couple of years yeah. ago, before the pandemic. And uh, we started our event outside. I mean, the, the first year we played uh, outside and inside the old Macy's when it was still happening. Played in the stairwell inside and then went outside and uh, the Missoulian took a front page Sunday picture of us on, the, on that rag uh, 30 some years ago. Uh, and then we've gotten comfy in the mall for bunches of years, and then with the corona that we uh, missed one year, and then we uh, took it outside last year with uh, the uh, restrictions that we had to put in for the, for the county health right. department. So I had to limit how many players, and everyone had to bring their own chair, and I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't charge, I couldn't do any of the paperwork. So uh, Edwards Jones, the local agency here in town, ponied up and paid for all the uh, national 
uh, fees for two was that because that's mm. a you know it's just not my thing. I, I'm not bright enough or creative enough to come up with something. You're a performer. So you just want to <laughs> you want to get out there and show the people that you're here. You want to enjoy the Yuletide spirit oh, and do all Scotty, that, all talk, those uh, keywords and other things. <laughs> talk to me, honey. Talk to me. <laughs> so, uh, what can people expect from uh, your performance? So this it, it will. It will be very similar to last year, except that we may have a few more tubas because we don't have to socially distance and we don't have to mask up. Uh, and I don't have to keep track of the folks in the audience. Last year, I had to keep track of them and have them check in on Google phone, you know, in case we had an outbreak. But I've, of all the stuff I've managed making music outside during the pandemic, I've never been the idiot that people point to going, hey, what about what <laughs> happened over there? No, 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 we've kept it clean. Uh, so it, it'll be at noon concert. I suspect we'll be done within the hour because uh, it gets cold. Yeah. We have some patio heaters, compliments of DraftWorks, <laughs> my friends at DraftWorks. Because <laughs> <laughs> last year, I remember you guys were doing you know, like your outdoor performance, you know, the Tube of Christmas as well at the band shell. Yeah. And I was thinking to myself, I was like, who the hell would want to go outside in this cold? <laughs> Unbelievable. I've had all kinds of people say, oh, I hope you do it there always. So everyone dressed warmly. Not many people brought... A summer uh, lounge chair. Most stood around clapping at themselves, and after about 45 or 50 minutes, most people are, are, are willing to call it a day, which means I don't have rehearsal, right? <laughs> so I can't add any new tunes to it or new people to it. So they're all folks that have done it before that I've, I've just prayed that they practice, and uh, uh, it'll go, it'll go yeah. wonderfully. And I got I, I, Ed Stalling going to drum with us again this year, and. Uh, uh, we'll have all of our, our stuff for sale because we can talk and meet people now uh, and uh, take their money. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but it's all about Tuba Christmas and, yep. and sharing the holiday spirit at noon at Bonner Park. Yep. So let's get, give the folks a little taste of what they can expect. we Will do. I'll, 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 I'll try to hack out a little uh, Christmas tune here for you. You know, right. I'm not really a tuba player. Like most tuba players, we're tuba wannabes <laughs> is what we are. Take it away. You got it. Thanks, buddy. <sighs> Merry Christmas! Oh, ho, ho. see you at Bonner Park Saturday at noon. All right. Thanks, Gary. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about movies that are coming out this weekend. I'm going to tell you everything that you need about uh, need to know about these movies uh, uh, so you don't have to go. So kicking things off is uh, West Side Story. Maria! I just saw another iteration of West Side Story. Maybe critics say it's good, uh, but it's, um, you know... It's uh, it's a West Side Story. So what do you expect? Uh, you know, like you know, if you but if you hate this movie, it's West Side Story. So you know, if you're a theater person, if you hate this movie, mm, forget about it. Theater people hate you. If you don't like this movie, directed by Steven Spielberg, you just hate movies all in general. You're a terrible person. Bada bing, bada boom. Have you ever seen War Horse, Bridge of Spies? I liked it when uh, Jimmy Fallon had kids write the scene for that movie. Look it up. Um, it's <laughs> uh, anyways. So uh, to save you guys some money, you know, you know West Side Story. You know, uh, two star-crossed lovers fall in love, ends in tragedy, bada-bing, bada-boom, one of them dies, uh, violence and all that stuff. It's basically just Romeo and Juliet, uh, and it was updated for modern times in the 50s, and now it's being rebooted. Moving on. And, uh, yeah, so, honestly, the thing that always gets my gripe against this particular movie is that uh, news media outlets and everything like that are just like, this movie will make you love going to the movies once again. It's like, who? Who are you referring to? All right, moving on. Uh, being the Ricardos, I love Lucy, but I hate her cheating husband. Watch as I Love Lucy, the female-led uh, comedy of the early U.S. television. Watch the falling out of Lucy and Desi Arnaz as they advertise this as being a Ricardos and folks not making the connection to it. So people are just like, uh, being Ricardos. Uh, but you have to watch the trailer. It's like, oh, it's I Love Lucy. Why don't I just call I Love Lucy whatever or the wh whatever her name is? But of course, it's just bad advertising. But expect uh, to get a glimpse again because they've done this uh, TV made for TV movie about their uh, tumult uh, tumultuous relationship over and over again. How Hollywood power couple. Uh, we've seen all the TV specials and made for TV movies, but why not made for streaming on Amazon? Hodgepodge. Uh, they uh, they get the guy from No Country for Old Men and My Greatest Fear, Nicole Kidman, stars in this movie as Lucy. Uh, just watch Batman Forever and you'll know what I mean about being afraid of Nicole Kidman. 
Uh, up next, uh, remember American Pie type films that have risque subject matter? Red Rocket is a euphemism for trigger warning, penis. Basically, it's about a former porn star returning to his hometown post-retirement. Something that all high school reunions consider hot gossip, but is kind of brave to do it regardless of exploitation of the flesh. Anyways, it's a kind of a comedy, but I saw the trailer and it's like, I'm not laughing. So basically expect him to uh, uh, reconnect with his ex-wife or current wife. I don't know. They never got divorced and uh, he, he meets another girl and they, yeah. Okay, let's speed things up. Uh, the Hating Game. The queen of Bloomhouse terrible films, Lucy Hall is back to hate, then fall in love with her co corporative, uh, corporate competitor. Uh, good looking male guy insert there. Uh, I assume the, uh, uh, the one who gets the job quits it for love. Up next, we got an alien movie starring uh, Riz as Ahmed, com who comes back from a hard he uh, luck health man fighting uh, an alien invasion. He's an indie actor looking to uh, do whatever role kind of falls onto his lap. He's uh, kind of in that in between place where it's just like, oh, there's some Oscar worthy performances. And then other movies are just like, I guess he has to, you know, has to pay the bills. And then this up next, we have France. A journalist deals with trauma in a very French way, uh, making trauma look cool. Uh, sad, depressing, all things France has to offer in this out ha art house film. Did I mention sad France film? And it's called France. All right, up next we have a scary nun movie. So, you know, nuns are scary. Boom, let's, let's keep it going on here. Now, what I, that, that, now, that's what I call a poster. Crying blood, nun, and probably something about demons and such because you cannot have a nun without thinking of a horror. Sister Act 3 couldn't come out soon enough. Uh, the Lady of Heaven. This one comes from Iraq, but in the form of Julie and Julia. Uh, if you haven't even seen the, you know, Julia Childs and, uh, you know. Anyways, the whole idea is that it's like you have two uh, corresponding stories from present day and the past, and it's the Lady from Heaven, so why not? All right, so those are the movies that are coming out this weekend. I have a movie that's uh, very uh, of its time, Christmas, um, and it's called... Uh, Santa Claus versus the devil. And without further ado, here's the brand new dub and stuff. And when I come back, I'm going to talk about some city council. There's a lot. There's a lot. <coughs> I may be red, but I ain't the Kool-Aid guy. Oh, oh, oh. A kid. All right, I guess I have to be extra sneaky. Shut up, Floor. Try to deliver presents. <laughs> Kiss my grits. Children. Uh, this is why I like to deliver and not be bothered by them. Alright, here we go. Okay, time to get. Well, that doesn't seem to work. Okay, football. Sports balls. Um, train set. Oh, God, trains. Boats. <laughs> hmm. Just like my elves. Oh, jeez. Why did this kid want a drum set? <laughs> Shut up, dog. What, billiard balls? I don't... I didn't see any pool tables around here. Huh. <sighs> well... Wait a minute. Where's my milk and cookies? Hmm. Better give this kid a talking to. I wonder if I could suffocate... No. Not again. Psst! Hey! Hey! Psst! Wake up! Ugh. Come on, wake up. Five more minutes, please, Mom. Oh, no. <laughs> ho, ho, ho. Nothing like a little asbestos to wake us up in the morning. Ho ho ho! I said, oh ho ho ho! <laughs> you know, I have all night. Ah, <laughs> it's uh, Yay, Santa! I'm so happy that you're here. I've been going through a lot of stuff lately. Ho ho ho! Tell me all about it over a cookie and milk. Well... 
Oh, that's right. You don't have cooking milk. You're one of those families that are gluten-free or whatever. Ho, ho, ho. But let me make this perfectly clear. You better bring those cookies or Santa ain't coming here. Now, do we understand each other? Yes, we do. I'm really sorry. Well, of course I forgive you. I am a saint, after all. A Saint Nick. Time to sleep again, son. And now, I will tell you a story about a family that did not give me cookies or milk. <laughs> they died. <laughs> now, if you tell anyone that I was here, you won't be getting any presents. Santa promise. Santa promise. Uh-oh, Santa better get the heck out of here. You never take Santa alive. Okay, that last part was kind of in bad taste, but I couldn't, re I couldn't resist. I just had to do something. Anyways, let's talk about some city council stuff. We we'll kick things off. You know, just kind of an overview. Uh, um, one of the major changes being brought up are the boundaries uh, for those wanting to be a part of the boards within the city. So the whole idea behind this, I talked a little bit about it last week. Uh, being able to, you know, like some people who want to be a boards and adjustments, you know, planning board and all that stuff, they have to live within the city limits, and so they uh, updated the bylaws to allow for people who live maybe about forty-five minutes away you know who can get here within a, a, a timely matter uh, just because they want to uh, widen the pool of people interested and experienced as well so one of the things that are on also on my radar will be West Broadway master plan and the water utility rate increase so they brought in an expert to talk about uh, monies and stuff like that and I don't know if I'm gonna be convinced about the raising of the water prices here in Missoula but uh, we're gonna talk about it so let's kick things off with the Broadway master plan and so, you know, the sleepy in, um, and also uh, one of the big things is that also the Missoula Water Company, their locations are on West Broadway and that general area. And uh, they're looking to also move from the water company to somewhere else, but at the same time to uh, move, uh, change what the uh, sleepy in motel, which the city bought last year for the uh, kind of a, a COVID quarantine for people who are homeless and who cannot quarantine themselves. So uh, Rob uh, Pikowski, Dover and Cole, the developer, kicks us off with this um, presentation about the envisionment of West Broadway. All that work over the past months and the dedication of many, many people uh, from Missoula, especially from North Side, West Side neighborhood and the student committee resulted in the final draft that I'll, I'll walk through with you all tonight. The area is about 15 acres located between Clark Fork River, West Broadway Street and North Russell Street, North California Street. The project is following up on the West Broadway, or no, sorry, uh, the Missoula Downtown Master Plan, which was adopted in November of 2019. In this plan, it talks about this area, the West Broadway Gateway area, it called it, and talks about adding new housing opportunities, adding affordable retail and restaurant space, redesigning intersections and making, crossing, making crossings of West Broadway Street easier and safer and more comfortable. It talks about orienting buildings to face Broadway Street, adding new sidewalks, and extending the Riverfront Trail. First big idea is to build the next grade. Oh, okay. So, uh, let's see. I'm going to start the quote over again. Um, Since February, West Broadway has been working towards creating this plan and with public engagement in hopes to get as much feedback as they can. And uh, So far, they've had over 300 people uh, give comment on how they want this area to look. Unlike the uh, Missoulian, uh, City of Missoula has a lot more leverage to a creative of mixed private, uh, public-private spaces that best suit all Missoulians. Um, Ro uh, Rob continues to talk about what could go on Broadway, and so so there's like five big uh, things, that big big ideas they want to do with this as well. And so we're going to kick things off with the first one, is to build the next uh, corridor to the downtown Missoula area. First big idea is to build the next great Missoula Neighborhood Center. This talks about a complete urban place, creating high quality and welcoming public spaces for all, and safe, comfortable, and interesting streets. So really, this portion of the document talks about the urban design, how the place could physically take form, and including a mix that's balanced between housing and working spaces and shopping and recreation. And 
All right. So part of this is that they uh, it's basically kind of like making a plaza, making a, a more of a, a kind of like a, a great space to go in there. From what I've seen, this will be uh, a lot like what they do with Wyoming Street. You know, they're going down the street with all those new complexes. You know, you have apartments on the top, but then you have businesses on the bottom. Bottom. It's uh, pretty high density and saves room for businesses potential for parks, which is one of the first items that they actually did spoke speak about is West uh, Side Park trails and just improving the area. And Rob also talks about flow and current private businesses and how they'll be impacted. Big idea too is to be a good neighbor and respect the local businesses currently on site. There's a lot of businesses within the study area, and, and a lot of these have been there for a long time, sometimes several decades. And so uh, the plan um, assists in the improvement of businesses along West Broadway Street. It makes the option for redevelopment available to private property owners while allowing local businesses to remain. All right. So, you know, uh, I mean, like like all construction, it's always going to um, affect businesses, you know, with everything that's been going on there as well. And I'm kind of imagining uh, just kind of what they've been doing with the Tremper Center near Albertsons is because they kind of like had like this whole kind of a bunch of storefronts for a while. But then they kind of broke down the middle and kind of opened it up for more of like a, a plaza kind of feel to it. So they wanted to create more of a kind of like a green space in the middle. Uh, kind of reminds me of what they do in Helena in Montana, where they have a kind of like a well, it's not as like. Con you know, like not as a uh, brick, uh, brick laid uh, sidewalks and stuff like that, but a little bit more like green spaces and trees and stuff like that. So uh, Rob also goes into talking a little. Wait, wait, where are my my notes? So he also uh, goes into talk about you know the long green, which will be associated with parks and connectivity of trails. So this is uh, the, the the this is what he has to say about this. This long green uh, is really the key, one of the key um, urban design and park features of the plan stretches from West Broadway Street all the way down to the Clark Fork River and along different segments of it, there's different activities that are proposed to happen. In this section, this is really the, the heart of the community, uh, the neighborhood center rather, where there's businesses and shops lining a new green space, out spaces for outside dining, uh, which is important uh, as we now know over the last couple of years, but also spaces for people who aren't um, going to local, aren't going to the businesses or aren't dining out, just places for people to sit down and enjoy uh, spending time in, in public or reading a book without having to uh, go to you know be shopping or dining at a at a restaurant, just um, benches and tables and so on. Okay, so as you can see here as well is that they wanted to also improve the waterfront views, and you can see that I uh, also put in. Um, there's this area right here. This kind of reminds me of what they do with the uh, Brennan's Wave and just kind of like uh, entry points and stuff like that. I mean, I really like a lot what they what 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 is thought about in terms of like green spaces and what they want to do in terms of uh, creating uh, a, a, a easy accessibility. Because when you think about it, and you and you want to go to a park to enjoy and just kind of hang out in the park, you have to cross streets. You have to go a block or two away from the businesses. But it's also nice to have kind of like these green areas where you don't have to have a road in the middle of it as well. And so uh, one of the big things that they also are talking about a little bit uh, in the last bit, uh, Rob spoke a little bit more about affordable housing and how this would leverage development because the city has invested its interest in this particular area. Idea four is probably the most important part of this plan, uh, and that's to help solve housing and rental space affordable affordability issues within the city. As you're aware of, uh, housing costs have gone up tremendously in the city, uh, more than doubling since 2011. So this plan includes a detailed set of strategies as to how affordable housing can be incorporated within the site and hopefully more broadly um, applicable to other parts and other developments that may happen uh, across Missoula. All right. To be perfectly honest, if we're talking about housing, I would say that the housing prices have pretty much jumped up by like sixty-six percent within the last uh, two years, just by looking at when I bought my house in two thousand eighteen, which was petering over two hundred thousand. And now, uh, when I look at it online, like I did the whole like, oh, let's go to Zillow.com, and I noticed that it's uh, now worth over three hundred and eighty-three thousand dollars, and it's ridiculous because my house doesn't seem like it's worth that much, honestly. But the last, <laughs> but I'm going to spare you more of this presentation. You know, there's, there's the whole big idea, and I want to get—I don't want to get carried away, but primarily the city wants to improve the West Broadway corridor as you're coming in from downtown. So one of the things is like when people are driving from um, Broadway, they drive you know by McDonald's, they buy uh, by the former subway. <laughs> uh, sorry, I don't mean to laugh, but they go past the Sleepy Inn. It's kind of a, a gated off uh, motel, and then they have a couple other businesses that are going on along there. But you don't really have the scope of like downtown Missoula, and it doesn't really start opening up until you get past like the like near the uh, 
hospital. So it's, it's kind of weird. Um, and one of the things is that this is going to improve the corridor. A city has a lot more invested in this particular area. And then developers are very uh, excited to get a, a jump on this. And Dover and Cole have been uh, pretty predominant in working with the city in many different developments, including, uh, I believe, the Mullen area, which I'll get to uh, later in this meeting as well, because the Mullen area will also be finally talking about um, uh, uh, construction and building roads and stuff like that. So I'll talk a little bit more about that later, but we're talking about water utilities. Yes, uh, water utilities. Water rates are going up. And so for the next couple clips, you're going to see that the city uh, has hired people and are going to be talking about this, and they're going to try to justify the raising of the rates. And uh, whether you guys agree with it or not, I am very kind of like very uh, on edge about it because I've always kind of been off the fence about it. So there's my bias right here and there, but I'm going to show you the presentation uh, as, I saw, as I saw it. So here is Mayor John Ng, Ng talking about the utility rate presentation. Uh, we believe we have an obligation to bring this system to an industry standard, and we're doing that in a in a uh, thoughtful and measured way. Um, and uh, this increase for water, again, is uh, is directly um, is is directly reinvested in the system to ensure that uh, it operates well today uh, and well into the future. Okay, so part of this uh, presentation is going to basically talk about, um, you know, it was like, oh, the other side, uh, you know, like the former private company, Carlisle Group, uh, Mountain Water Company, what, what it was referred to, was going to uh, plan to raise the rates anyways, but mostly to line the pockets of their investors and their shareholders, rather than just uh, reinvesting back into the community. Also, the city of Missoula is also growing, so there's going to be a lot more infrastructure being built, especially in the Mullen area, which I'll get to later. Be patient. So uh, the justification is basically like this. Um, so they talked about a little bit of that, about this, a little bit about that. I'm sorry, I'm going back to my notes. I'm just going to repeat the same thing is that the private company would have raised the rates for their own benefit rather than the benefit of the city of Missoula. The biggest shift was that the water company wanted to replace at least 1% of water piping infrastructure a year. And so far, just this last year, they got up to about 4% and hopes by next year to get up to 0.6%. No, oh, sorry, sorry. 0.4% was just within the last year of uh, water pipe replacements. And they hope to get up to 0.6%. Uh, to kind of jump things off. And with the raising in um, rates, they want to be basically be able to replace 1% of the piping every year for the next 100 years or so, uh, just so the replacement of the whole thing. And I know the argument that we've had, uh, haven't had an increase in some ways in some time. Um, the city just last year combined a lump sum of the three storm, uh, three uh, utilities, stormwater, sewer, and of course the water company, resulting in about, uh, my water bill showed me about 42 uh, 95 a month. Just this last uh, uh, pay period, I believe I paid $44.19 and then the servicing fee and all that stuff. But that's my water bill, mind you. Uh, Melina Hobert, a project consultant with FC FC FCS Group, speaks on this a little bit more detail and she was hired to talk about the numbers. The water capital needs in the next three to four years are, um, through 2024, are $36.7 million. Um, you can see that there's a big capital plan intended for this coming year. And the other thing I want to call out here is we have delineated between general capital and development capital. So these green boxes are capital that's needed for growth going forward. Uh, and that's separated here on your on your graphic. The other thing I want to point out is that of this, you know, the 36 million, 18 million is for main replacements. And that's really to reduce system leakage, which increases efficiency and lowers the energy usage, which is something Logan talked about earlier and is a really important goal for your system. All right. So uh, let's see. Where was I? Local McInnes, what she referred to is, uh, who is an engineer who works for the Missoula Water Company, has spoken in length about the poor conditions of the water system and the amount of leakage is enough to fill nine football stadiums. Um, I, I may be flubbing those numbers, but it is a high volume of numbers. Uh, there are a good amount of stadiums that can be filled up with the water leakage that Missoula leaks in our water system. A key point during the Missoula public acquisition of the water company, I may be wrong on those numbers of the stadiums, but I do remember visiting in the vast terms of the water leakage. Uh, 
$11.2 million will be going towards sewers. Uh, Agroy Missoula and Stormwater will get about $4.1 million for their infrastructure. Uh, the best argument for the increase is to compare and contrast with other communities, in which uh, Melanie does in this next graphic. The combined impact of those three different uh, water, sewer, and stormwater rate changes. Uh, this is, you'll see here, it's the same collection of cities that we saw earlier during Logan's presentation. Um, Missoula, we have both your 2021, so your existing rate structure, and then your 2024 projected rate increases here. Um, you know, they're both, they're both at the bottom <laughs> of this chart. And one of the things that, there's a couple things I'd point out here. Um, the first is that not everybody has a stormwater utility. Uh, the second is that your increases are still keeping you at the bottom of the overall range. And in, in combination with the three utilities, you're looking at about a three to at most $5 increase on average over those, over the three years we're looking at. All right. So of course, as you see here, you know, the slides, you know, Missoula's gener generally down here with this slide. Uh, Whitefish is at the highest, e even though it doesn't have as high a population as some places such as uh, Billings, um, Bozeman, and some of these other places, uh, major cities in the city of Missoula. And Missoula basically kind of follows uh, with the same kind of numbers of Great Falls. And the projected number for 2024 is about 71, just to catch up with Billings. And we're still going to be, be behind Bozeman, which is about $87. So there's just a lot of, uh, um, you know, billing and impacts and just stuff like that that are happening as well. Um, you know, what a price to pay as a homeowner. I can just shake my fist at more bills, but as someone who cares about Missoula's f future, I can see that is a better than a reactive improvements that would result in higher costs. Uh, you know, honestly, think about it like this. If your water main broke, Yes, you have to pay for it, but the, also the Missoula water system has a great deal in place where you don't have to pay it all outright. Uh, if you ha are hooked up to the system, you can have payment installments, and you can use that within the uh, monthly payments that you do for your uh, generic water bill. And so, you know, it's just like the city moved for the final consideration, and we'll vote on this next Monday. So it's still in the public hearing. You have until next Monday to uh, give your public comment and to uh, email the city of Missoula. So let's talk about some uh, committee meetings. And one of the big things that are happening is the annexation of portion of ground. Grand Creek Road. This is important because th this is a, a lot of industrial site next to uh, the North Scott Street neighborhoods. And uh, one of the things is that they want to make a uh, they want to make more residential commercial use out of this place as well. They want to rezone an, an area and have more housing opportunities that would fall in line with the Scott Street Master Plan. Kind of a big deal for growing Missoula, but pretty uh, typical for the site. Our Missoula yearbook, uh, so they're talking about 2018 to 2020. And so this is kind of like a reflection of uh, the R Missoula, you know, the whole uh, downtown master plan. Last couple of years has been slowly implemented to try to build, uh, grow inward and, and all that stuff like that. And so uh, Ben Brewer, Ben Brewer gave a presentation um, and he talked a little bit more about this as well in terms of focusing inward. A big part of focus inward is, is developing efficiently and using where infrastructure um, can already support it. Um, it's looking to incentivize mixed use development so that residences are within you know, walking distance to grocery stores and other basic necessities and really establishing that walkability um, within our neighborhoods and in the community. Um, it's looking to locate the higher density housing near transit, biking, walking routes, and um, incentivizing development that's close to that existing infrastructure, including non-motorized and, and public transportation facilities. And so these were some of the, the guiding, you know, statements from the growth policy that fed into um, the update of, and, and, and evolution of the Armazula Development Guide model. And um, Really, you know, part of the um, intent of this is to use is to make this a resource that guides um, planning within the city, not just um, related to the growth policy and, and land use, but also transportation and infrastructure, housing, and, and so on. Of course, you know, you see the chart here. You see all, uh, you know, folks talking about, you know, like the importance of uh, growing the city uh, uh, responsibly, but also being able to create a high density planning. Uh, things like public transportation trails can really thrive on based on this policy. Now, I understand that some of you out there are more into the traditional home model. And uh, during this presentation, they also talked about, uh, you know, how like the difference between rental units and more housing units. They were pretty much even within the last couple of years. You had over 700 new housing units just in in terms
terms of those housing on lots with land around it, and also another 700 units um, in terms of those high density type stuff. So, um, you know, uh, something to take away from this is that Belsa Ben also brings up uh, what this policy wants to avoid developing. And so this is uh, what he's talking about in terms of like floodplains and such. You know, this is looking at where development just um, functionally, technically can or cannot occur. So it's, it's looking at physical and social constraints, like um, um, it, it has to be private land, the zoning or land use need, um, needs to be uh, allow for residential development. It, it looked at where the floodplain is and, and steep slopes and um, things like that. And so established kind of the, a base layer of um, just generally where where is um, development capable of happening. Of course, don't get me started on the 100-year floodplains because a lot of places have development in those areas as, as well. There's not much uh, infrastructure put into place. And, you know, as uh, somebody who grew up in a household that actually had to deal with some uh, major flooding one year back in the 1990s, uh, there, was a, uh, there was a big deal and a big lawsuit to the county about developing on the floodplain. So there's a lot of land. Yes, there's a lot of land up the Mullen area, but there's also a lot of issues in terms of the 100-year year floodplain. And what that means is that uh, just in terms of like uh, le uh, legalese and stuff like that within the whole idea is that you have a one in chance of flood damage within a 30 year uh, 30 year range mortgage and so with that you know uh they also warn you and there's also uh, some kind of there might be some pricing deals with that more rural areas le lesser development but overall the growth policies plan is to get uh 510 to 700 dwelling units a year but the last three three years have seen a total housing stock increase about 1600 uh in the last three years so you had 1600 um the low end uh, uh, you know they got their low end so they wanted to at least develop 1,500 houses in the last three years, and they were able to get 1,600. But with the whole demand and the whole need for all these housing and all that stuff, uh, housing stock, it's just not cutting it just within terms of the demand for housing here in the city of Missoula as well. Um, pandemic uh, slapped employment, uh, and many folks are being overworked in their current jobs. My friend's brother, uh, who works as an architect, overworked and looking to quit. Uh, we're growing, but our developers are kind of still the same. There's not many other new developers that are coming to the city of Missoula, so we've had to look out outside of the city of Missoula in terms of people with developers. But a lot of times it always relegates back to the developers here in the city of Missoula for final approval uh, materials, trying to collect a lot of things. Because you can't, you can be a developer, you can be a person with a, 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 a a clipboard and be like, okay, this is good, this is good. And then you need the, the, the labor, the workers, the stock and all that stuff like that. And a lot of times you uh, always wanna hire the local people first, but then now they're getting overworked and o you know, like there's a lot of people who are just dealing with that kind of stuff. So um, East Mullen and Grant Creek were one of the few neighborhoods that I saw dwelling units pass triple digits in number of units. Mullen was about three, 232 uh, new dwelling units. Grant Creek was about 105 with a total of 744 new houses. And then there's the 744 apartments, condo type complexes. So it's kind of a bit, of, uh, a bit even on both like kind of like the, uh, the concept of rental versus housing. Surprisingly enough, we have not had uh, mega structures pop up with only two uh, projects which would have 50 plus dwelling units within their structures and so and over uh, 20 with the three to seven you know your whole like attached townhouse kind of mini condos with four uh, apartments and stuff like that uh, 2018 saw 18% uh, of residential development 2019 was about 14%. 2020, mind you, because of the pandemic, saw an 8%, uh, but it shrank. But 2021 will probably see a large jump. There's been a lot of construction going on here that what I've covered from... Uh, so that's basically what I covered from what I saw from this report. You guys can check out the meeting as well. It was kind of taxing to kind of listen to uh, what they're talking about with the yearbook plan and everything like that. But, you know, there's that's kind of what I wanted to leave you guys with. Um, but... I also promised I was going to talk a little bit about the Mullen, uh, the Mullen Road project. So the build grant, which is also being funded through federal dollars. You know, last uh, couple of years they've been looking to get uh, federal funding. Thirteen million dollars was the first one before the pandemic hit, and so this spring. They're actually going to actually break ground and actually start doing some construction on roads and working on phase one of the project. So here's Jeremy Keen with the city talking a little bit about what they're planning on doing, um, which includes uh, the extension of England Boulevard, uh, connecting Mullen Road uh, and Broadway between the, the streets of Mary Jane, Mary Jane Boulevard and also... Um, 
George Elmer Drive. So without further ado, here is Jeremy King. Um, as you know, we are progressing with the Mullen Build Project. You can see those, those corridors drawn in red here. Um, we intend to break ground on, on portions of this in the spring. And um, at the same time, we did the Sutupkin area master plan and development is, is also responding in this area quite rapidly. So we're seeing several major subdivisions come online. Um, the one that pertains to this development agreement is being called Evergreen and it falls right um, along England Boulevard. So this has not come before you yet. This is still in preliminary uh, sufficiency review, but, um, but it's relevant to the build project because as you can see, they, they front England, England Boulevard and there's a number of new connecting roads that are being planned. All right. So as you can see, you know, like uh, if you look at this map once again, you can see like the throughway that's going to be uh, England Boulevard, which is going to connect uh, Flynn, Mary Jane Boulevard, and also um, George Elmer Drive. It's going to be a whole connection area as well. A lot of old farmland, uh, the, uh, the Doherty's. Uh, I grew up next to them as well, but they had a lot of the farmland up there. Mullen area, th a lot of development happening. Um, and it's just, uh, it's it's definitely a very, uh, just a lot of uh, things moving forward with this. And um, yeah, uh, th this is uh, also being partly funded by the build grants and the county and city will cover additional costs in facing these neighborhoods based on costs and rising uh, prices of materials, which affects us all, not just uh, you know people looking to buy a house, but people also looking to develop and build houses because you can't build houses as uh, more and more comes, uh, uh, comes around. And Jeremy talks a little bit more about uh, money uh, in terms of paying for these projects. So it, it, it went from um, the county providing about a million dollars of funding to now providing $800,000 plus a $500,000 contingency fund. Um, they are continuing to commit $500,000 of future money for trails coming from the Parks and Trails Bond. And so we'll use that in a future phase of the build project. And um, then the city is contributing um, 5.8 million, which is about two and a half million of transportation impact fees and about 3.2 million of uh, water and sewer development funds for, for our portions of the project. You know, of course, you know, uh, one of the major things that uh, the city is getting is that we're getting a lot of infrastructure money being put into place. Water is part of the, uh, uh, the, 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 the Biden's latest bill is, you know, with uh, infrastructure within water, just improve the areas as well. And this would hopefully help along the way. So the city has a lot of money that they're allocating towards this as well. Mm -hmm. uh, those items are part of phase one. Some of the items that they can't do, they're gonna they throw it over to phase two and see about funding sources. But that's the nice thing about having phases is that it's like, okay, these are the clear projects that we can fund. This is what we're gonna do. And then they put them into phase two. If they can't phase some of them in phase one, so they just basically kind of move the pieces, just kind of push it a little bit further up the, uh, the line just to see what they can do later on and then their priority it's all based on their priorities and they've been talking about this in length so many times and i've talked about it also in length as well parks and conservation are also looking to uh, purchase playground equi equipment during this meeting as well also trail lights off of karis park will be added as they remove the giant berm in the middle of the karis park you know uh the one of the kids rolled down the hill uh, of course uh, you know like the old hill off the karis uh part uh god i'm just like so scatterbrain right now i'm trying to think of things while not actually reading my notes but without further ado that kind of uh, lets you know what's going on with the city of missoula i did uh, back to referring to the parks and conservation uh you know they want to purchase some playground uh, uh, playground equipment uh they're going to spend a, a quite a bit of money on this as well you guys can look that up as well by logging on to the city of missoula's website ci.missoula.mt.us it is a wonderful source for everything missoula and it is a great way for you to get involved with your local government you can uh, do some permitting processes stuff like that if you are putting on a neighborhood kind of like a, a block party this is the be best place to kind of go to and check this out as well all right, I do have an art clip for you guys. This is a brand new art clip featuring art and uh, their holiday show at the Clay Studio of Missoula. And then when I come back, we're going to talk about some other events that are happening this weekend. We got a couple crafts fair.
Hey guys, welcome back. Those are some uh, uh, art guide for you guys. Uh, nice art clip by uh, Rick Phillips here uh, at M MCAT. So stro stroller strides are already happening, but of course you guys can check this out every week. This is a great way for uh, total body conditioning for mothers out there or uh, to fathers with their kids. Each 60 minute workout is compromised of strength training, cardio and core restoration, all while entertaining little ones with songs, activities and fun. And it happens at Tool Park every week at 9.30 a.m. All right, open hour the makerspace is a great way for 3d printers lasers carving and more hands-on one project with based uh with the project based space in the missoula public library also the missoula public library you got tiny tales and story time starting at 10 30 a.m for the little kids to learn about reading and enjoying books you got yarns and watercolor at noon today at the public library on the fourth floor it is a great opportunity for people to uh continue the projects and w make that scarf for the holiday season and or do some painting and work with rob p over with watercolors uh, adobe editing and photo Photoshop lessons at MCAT. So if you're interested, uh, we have some spots available for anybody who's interested in learning a little bit about Photoshop or Adobe uh, Premiere Editing. And this is from 3 to 5 p.m. Give us a call at 542-6228 to sign up, or you can register online through the Missoula Public Library's website. Santa's at the mall, and he's going to be there a lot of times. Times are posted at the MissoulaEvents.net, but they're pretty much going to be there for most uh, peak hours at the... Uh, at the mall, the Southgate Mall, and it is a great way to get pictures with Santa Claus to send to the families. Adult night at Hearts of Fire. Uh, take advantage of a couple's hour of, uh, of adult time and bring your spouse, friends, family, and coworkers to spend the evening painting pottery, glass views, or do-it-yourself canvases. The Hearts of Fire Pottery and Art Studio at 5 p.m. Beth Lowe and Dave uh, Horgan at the Ten Spoon Winery. Enjoy some jazz, swing, salsa, rock, and R&B, soul, you name it. They play it. Winery is going to be open from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. It's 5 dollars for people and kids get in free one for wine selections and it's at 10 spoon winery starting at 6 p.m base camp old library location just next door to this library location fancy that hang out with friends eat snacks and do some pretty cool activities board games arts and crafts and this is a great way for kids it's uh f it's free for the first time and it's five dollars per session and this is for uh from seven to nine p.m and this is you know if parents want to go out for dinner and they want a, f a fun place to drop them off base is a uh a uh, subsidiary of Parks and Recreation of the city of Missoula. Zootown Cabaret pre presents British Invasion. We're going to be live streaming this on um, the Zach's uh, YouTube and Facebook pages. We're also going to be streaming it on MCAT.org through the local live. Joins us for a review of songs from British musicals such as Jesus Christ Superstar, Les Mis, and Mamma Mia. Then they'll be doing all sorts of performances as Zootown Cabaret is performing an ensemble in University of Montana School of Music performing songs from musical theater and popular music. And I will be there tonight as well and it starts at 7 I believe the live thing starts at 7 30 p.m. and so you guys can check that out and on online be sure to, to subscribe to uh, Zootown Arts Community Center for more information you're a good man Charlie Brown and MCT is even greater place to host this uh, show and Charlie Brown is an iconic story that needs a little description will it be fun for children yes will grown-ups think back to their old childhood a good uh, childhood good grief yes and all the belo uh, familiar and beloved characters will be brought out life on stage portrayed by a cast of adult actors this play was written in 1967 and has been revised with the times dueling pianos with Josh Farmer and Doug Olson will be at the Staven Hoop Speakeasy tonight at 8 p.m. Uh, Buddha puppy cosmic sands will be at Monk's Bar it's going to be some cool hangout music and club music. And the workers will be at the Union Club with miscellaneous jam band, dancing, all that sorts of fun as, as well. And also Saturday, you have your winter's markets at the uh, mall from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. It's a great way for arts and crafts and all sorts of fun like that. And speaking of crafts, Big Sky High School is having a craft fair starting tomorrow at 9 a.m. Holly Crafts Fair, lots of wonderful craft items for a variety of local artists. Elks Hoop Shoot Free Throw Contest. Meadow, Meadow Hill Middle School is doing a shoot contest. It is a 50-year anniversary, and they reimburse people who travel from long distances and uh, through the Missoula Hellgates Elks Lodge 383 and the Elks National Foundation. You can uh, learn more information, and you can register at Helks, hellgateelks at gmail.com for a registration or pre-registration. Um, also, MCAT Tour and Training is at 10 a.m. tomorrow. If you're interested in checking out equipment and using some of the equipment that MCAT has to offer to make your own videos and more. MCAT Tour and Training is the place to be. It's every Saturday at 10 a.m. Explore the wilds and wonders of winter. Travelers Rest Straight Park is a great way to enjoy a step into the winter wonderland and Travelers
Rogers Rest State Park, State Park with ex ex expert nationalist guide Hobie Hare. Learn uh, how to enjoy the woods and wilds in wintertime. We'll want what to look for and what to bring. Hobie will focus your attention on bird sounds and views, animal tracks and trails, the quiet uh, of the kind the nature. It's all about nature. They threw in a word in there I have never seen before. Get off my grits. Anyways, as you wander the trails, get a spectacular view of snow-covered Lolo Peaks. Bears, mountain lions, foxes, and bobcats have all been seen in the park, as well as the more common winter birds and small creatures. Travers Rest State Park in Lolo, starting at 10 a.m. tomorrow. It is a great way to get involved. Tony, uh, Tony, uh, uh, Tony Banovich Roads Tracks and Trail Memorial Run. Missoula Fairgrounds are kicking things off at 11 a.m. for uh, the race director for the Missoula Marathon and executive uh, director for Run Wild. It was a kind, generous, and encouraging to all welcoming countless new runners over the years. He was deeply dedicated to the Mi Missoula and Montana running communities. The first 300 participants were gu guaranteed a custom long sleeve casual tea. All participants will receive a custom bib, post-race snacks and drinks, chip, timing and indoor gathering areas please note that there are no awards for this event it is a run in memorial to tony all right so enchanted christmas village historic nine mile schoolhouse step back in to explore the old-fashioned christmas wonderland ride a country train send a letter to the north pole decorate a cookie wander through these elves workshops and meet with santa to have your photo taken and this is going to be happening at the historic nine mile schoolhouse at 11 a.m tomorrow tuba christmas i had gary on uh the show this morning, but uh, he's going to be doing a, a tuba Christmas at the Bonner Band Shell in Bonner Park. That's Bonner Park, not Bonner, the city. So Bonner Park is off Hastings Avenue behind Paxson School. Tuba Christmas is a great way for pl pl plenty of laughs and holiday cheer at the Bonner Band Shell this Saturday from 12 to 1 p.m. And speaking of, uh, and when you're done with that, you can bring your kids over to the Saturday uh, drop-in, stop animation for kids. Let kids learn computer animation and cooperation in this free two activity offered every Saturday at MCAT Studios located here within the library. Holiday opens hours at the Clay Studio of Missoula. This is a great way to get involved with the talented residents, artists, and instructors and have fun activities including decoration, paintings, and more. Clay Studio of Missoula is a great way for people to learn a new skill, making their own mugs, ashtrays, and more. You <laughs> ashtrays that's the first thing i think about when i think think about clay stuff but they have the um holiday uh swing gala at the zootown arts community center at two in the afternoon they also have it's free but then they have a uh an expensive swing uh set from 5 to 6 30 p.m with 20 dollar at general admission but the first one's first set's free the second one costs you some money uh tom catmull will be at the uh, draftworks brewery uh, live music with the zootown music uh cranky sand public house fluxus will be at the furnace will be at the furnace experimental sounds and all sorts of stuff you got some karaoke at the um at the, the <laughs> at West Side Lanes, so you got Demon Doll in <laughs> Tice Death Care Industries at Monks, uh, Jackson Holt at Union Club, uh, Club Music at the Badlander, DJ Chris Moon, and then um, of course you can't forget about the uh, Sunday Handbell concert happening at the First United Methodist Church on Sunday at 3 p.m. All right, that about does it for my morning show and for Wake Up Missoula. I'm Scott Ramp. Take care, guys.